I'm a summon the rhyme, I'm dumping. Killing the blind, I promise to let the sun in. Strip of the dark ways, we march to the drum in. Jump when they tell us that they want to see jumping. Dad, I want to see some fist pumping. Chris something, take back what's yours. Say something that you know they might attack you for. Cause I'm sick of being treated like I have before. Like a stupid standing for what I'm standing for. Like this war's really just a different brand of war. Like Alright guys, welcome to Wide Awake Radio. I am Charlie McGrath, your host, and I just knocked my entire desk over. Uh, welcome to the program. If you're listening and not in the chat room, you can go to wideawakenews.com, click on Wide Awake Radio, and join in the chat. Uh, I'd like to thank all the people who are in there now because uh, my promo vid never uh, uploaded. I just noticed that a few uh, minutes before we started tonight. So uh, thank you to all the uh, people who are showing up without being prompted by a promo vid. I appreciate that. Um, tonight, Warren's going to join me again in here in a minute because uh, I had uh, I had a couple of cancellations occur, and uh, uh, after uh, talking to Warren a little bit today, he agreed to come on graciously, and I, I, gr- I greatly appreciate it. Uh, but for the last uh, half hour or so, I, I've been working on a video, and as a matter of fact, it's uploading now. If it uh, if it finishes uploading before the end of the show, I'll post it in the chat. Um, and it's it's terrifying to me how uh, uh, Warren and I, I hadn't seen his video. I hadn't seen the video he put out, the, the latest one. I think he put out late last night or this morning. Um, but uh, Warren sent me a message on uh, Instant Messenger and say, I, I told him I'm, I'm posting a video that uh, could end up getting me into some hot water uh, because I'm, I'm mad. I'm ticked off. I, I, I absolutely am over it. I'm over the propaganda. I'm over the lies. I'm over the... Uh, never-ending uh, sob story of Wall Street needing to be healthy. You know, in, in his video, I'd lay it all out, and like I said, I'll, I'll put it in there. But in a nutshell, look, we're sitting here uh, on the uh, the uh, night after the State of the Union, and I don't hold, you know, it, the president doesn't matter. He doesn't matter as far as the fault of because, you know, it isn't any more his fault than it is Bush's fault or any of the other for the last four decades who have led us to where we are. They're not in control. They're not in power. If our president would have come out there and laid it out to the American people the way it needs to be laid out, came out and said, look, this is where we are. We need to, we need to get together as a group, as a nation, and we need to uh, band together and we need to do the things we need to do in order to make a more perfect union rather than sprinkle the airwaves with his pixie dust lies about how everything's on the right track. We're going to be a great nation again. 26 million people in this country right now, unemployed or underemployed, 4.5 people looking for every job in this country. In 2000, not to say that was banner times, but in 2000 after that recession, it was only 2.9 looking for each job. Eight million families have been thrown out of their homes since the the Great Depression 2.0 has started. And it's all because of this $14 trillion toxic wasteland, this minefield created by the too big to fails who are in Davos right now partying like there is no tomorrow, like there is no uh, crime, like there's no punishment for the crime they've committed. Because there isn't. They understand that nothing has been done. There's not a government on earth that can touch them. They've proven it now. They've taken the greatest country uh, in the history of this planet, the greatest power in the history of this planet, and they've totally neutered its representation. They've totally neutered it. It's it's a representative form of government. This is not a democracy by any stretch of the imagination. It's an absolute affront to any thinking citizen who might want uh, to pass on liberty, might want to pass on freedom to their next generation. We've let them destroy the dream of this country because it is destroyed. You know, we have a a spokesman come out last night, sell us on uh, like a used car salesman that everything's getting better. Guys, 20 times the stimulus money has been spent and given to the same banksters who got us here uh, rather than being paid to the citizenry of this country who inevitably are going to end up paying for all this uh, in the first place. There's just no ending to the insanity. But most people are just tuned out. They don't understand. They don't care. They shove their head in the sand. They drink their beer on the weekend. And they hope the gladiator game coming up uh, will dull their life enough, dull their senses enough, so they can trudge through another week if they're lucky enough to have a job. Well, it's not sustainable. People like Warren, who's coming on a second, have been telling us for a long time, it's not sustainable. 
It's not going to end well. It's not going to end with a sudden increase in this sector or that sector. They're all sectored out. We've entered the last bubble this country's ever going to see. It is this ridiculous, insane bailout bubble. And we have not one leader, state, federal, Local, it doesn't matter. Nobody has the guts to stand up and say, we are in a whole lot of trouble and we better turn the corner because it's almost too late. Not one of them. Nobody will stand up and say this. If they, if they do, they're labeled a, uh, a whatever. You name your moniker. A neo-Nazi, uh, you know, they're Zionist, this, that. Uh, you know what? It, it, if you try to speak the truth, you will be stifled and pushed down and shoved down. And we're going to see this coming here to alternative media. I have no doubt. It's half in jest when I send Warren a message saying, this video posting now is going to get me in hot water. But I know eventually it's going to come to that. I know eventually the truth is going to be so overwhelming and so overpowering and so dangerous to the people who are in charge, the people who are letting their fellow citizens uh, wither and die on the vine. The truth is going to be so painful for them, they will go to any lengths possible uh, in, in order to keep that truth from getting out. Well, until my last breath, I will come on here and I will tell you, you know, we are being sold down the river by a bunch of, uh, what else you call them? They're a bunch of pimps. They have no desire other than to line their own nest. And we're going to sit here and we're going to be told that 12,000 points on the Dow Jones equals recovery. You know, any metric you want to use, we are not in recovery. We are in greatest of great depressions. I, I just don't know how to get that point across any harder than I have. You know, and, and there is times where I feel like I'm beating my head up against the wall. And uh, then there's times where I realize that if it wasn't for alternative media, if it wasn't for guys like Warren and Dimcat uh, and me coming on and other great other great people I'm forgetting to mention, Christopher Green, P.D. Lumina, you know, uh, Vision Victory, uh, all these guys who are in this alternative media, Jeff Rince, if it wasn't for a few people trying to bring the truth out there at no financial gain of their own, uh, at, at much risk personally, uh, reputation-wise and slander and outright insane threats, you know, if it wasn't for this core belief in freedom and liberty and it wasn't for this core uh, love for the fellow man and, and trying to pass something on that is worthwhile and decent and wholesome uh, and, and something that, that looks like a, a nation that has integrity still, th th there would be no truth getting out there. The mainstream media has absolutely no desire to do anything other than to serve their masters on Wall Street. The same exact desire our so-called representatives have in Washington. It's not to serve you. It's not to serve you. They are not in it for you. No matter what they say, no matter what they say they're going to do, no matter what trinket they're going to put out there, our country is falling into an abyss that it will never come out of. We will be the great tragedy uh, of this century. All right, that's enough. Warren, are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you, uh, and I'm watching Sputnik overhead, my friend. <laughs> I just, when you asked me in messaging, did I watch your video, I turned it on, and then I sent you a message saying, it scares me sometimes how our anger level tends to mirror uh, one another, uh, because uh, I didn't watch it till my uh, till right before the show, and, and man, I feel you. I feel your anger, I feel your intensity. Uh, Warren, it, it, it's it's deflating, uh, and, and it's sometimes beyond words. On you know, it, it can truly tear up uh, a person's uh, soul to to uh, to sit here and observe what's happening to our nation, what's happening to yeah. our people. And go ahead. The State of the Union address, which happened last night, on my videos a year and a half ago, I said it was imperative that they start to talk about alternative energy. They start to talk about high-speed rail. They start to start, start to talk about putting investment, capital investment, into our economy to get jobs back, to set the conditions for getting jobs back, for giving us competitive advantage. And uh, this was something that had to be done two years ago. And here we have Stephen Chu. And uh, I, I traced down where this idea came from, the Sputnik moment. A, a month ago, Chu gave a speech saying that technologically, infrastructure-wise, and societally, we are facing a Sputnik moment where our country is so far backwards from other nations, uh, nations in Europe that have high-speed rail, they have rail interconnectivity, they don't require aircraft everywhere, uh, they have tunnels and tunnels, and in Singapore and in Hong Kong, they're going to have a, a mega city connecting uh, several cities in China, all with high-speed rail, all with public transportation, and we are being left behind and there is nothing to give us 
in this country labor value on the world stage. So what's going to happen to us? Well, we're going to be in the situation where the rest of the world is, where it takes 50% of their work effort to put food on the table. And that's where we're going to, we're going to be. If you're spending $100 a week on groceries now for your family, and that's a very low number for most families. If you're spending $100 a week for groceries, put that up to $500 a week. And that's going to happen within the next two years. It might even happen sooner than that, Warren. I mean, you know, every story, uh, every time I go to pull stories for the website, uh, I see more and more and more, and the intensity and the uh, uh, frequency of, uh, I mean, you know, this country's rioting right now because they can't afford to eat. And, uh, you know, the show we had last night talking about preparation and, and growing your own food couldn't be more timely because, um, it, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, what, what, what is it going to look like here when uh, – it makes me sick. 43 million people on food stamps, 26 million people underemployed. Uh, and, and what's it going to look like when uh, uh, you can't afford to buy the basic necessities uh, in order to eat? I mean, we truly, truly are heading to those kind of days. You know, we had those days before, Warren, in the Great Depression, in the Dust Bowl, in the Midwest, uh, where people literally were starving to death uh, and, and dying because their lungs were filling with sand. And we think we're such a, a, a further, more more civilized, more advanced society and culture than we were then. But you know, here we are with all the, the brilliance culmination of man and thousands of years of technology, and, and you know, it's amazing what can be done with our technology. Yet here we sit, 2011, and we're looking at soaring food prices. We're looking at corruption that is just beyond uh, definition, and, uh, and we're on the abyss of having worldwide global uh, starvation, Warren. How is this possible? I mean, I, I know it's a rhetorical question, but... I mean, it's truly, truly a very uh, gloom and doom attitude I'm bringing to the show tonight. Well, there's definitely a gloom and, boom, uh, gloom and doom attitude because there's no leadership in the country that's just looting. And in place of leadership, what we have is branding, branding, where they come up with a politician and they brand them. And they brand them with an ideology and they brand them because they look nice on TV. They don't look like me, certainly. They don't look like you, Charlie. And uh, they are just marketable commodities. And we could see this guy, ISA, is being set up to be the next marketable commodity. Instead of being Democratic, he's Republican. And no one is at the level of competence that they were in 18, uh, 1900, let's say uh, 1910. Guys like Robert Moses, I don't know if you know who Robert Moses is, but he built out a lot of the infrastructure that New York uh, City relies upon. He built out highways. He built out uh, water systems, the Triborough Bridge, the Brooklyn Battery Bridge. He did post-war city planning. He, uh, he basically allowed this, 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 this part of the, uh, of the country to have the infrastructure it needed to become great. And when you go through New York City, when you pass through Queens, there are skyscrapers four, five, six stories tall, they used to be factories, six-story buildings. It used to be factories for people to have jobs. And all those jobs have gone overseas. And I'm looking at a piece of propaganda from 19, uh, 1949, and it talks about Joe King, the average worker in the United States, and how he's the beneficiary of a, life, of, of a, a lifestyle because his work represents $20,000 worth of infrastructure that's behind it. He multiplies his value of labor against this big, great infrastructure that is our country. And it drew the comparison. It showed you a coolie in China having to carry gasoline by hand across the country. And they said that his value is only 10 cents a day when Joe King's value in his car and his automobile was worth 20. Well, guess what? Your labor is only worth 10 cents now. And you're going to have trouble sourcing food. And you're going to have trouble... Uh, holding on to your assets, your house that you thought was valuable is going to be worth nothing. Your pension that you thought is valuable is going to be worth nothing. Your savings is going to be worth nothing, and your labor is going to become worth nothing because it's going to equalize with the rest of the world, and you'll join the people in China with their wage or in India with their wage. Only they're going to build that infrastructure, and you're going to have nothing. 
and you're going to have nothing because of the quality of leadership in this country and because they don't have an agenda, because they have no planning, and because they have this multitude of masses of, of governments, it's over 75,000 of them in the United States, leeching off your body, leeching off your work, contributing absolutely nothing, making deals with brokerage companies, giving deals to their own law firm like they do in Nassau County or in Putnam County, New York, where they hire their own law, law firms, putting their own relatives on Section 8 housing, selling their houses to Section 8 to to, uh, to, to, to relatives. They could be Section 8 housing. I know a, Nassau, a, a Putnam County executive that just, does just that, take advantage of Section 8 to give his grandmother welfare as he's collecting a fat cat salary to do nothing but rob from us. That's the quality of leadership we have. We have school boards that vote themselves bonuses, that hire superintendents that are not needed, that hire principals and have no child left behind policies where people learn absolutely nothing in school. That's the nation you're living in. And this, all this jingoistic noise about what a great country you are, we are, what a free country we are, what a constitution we have, that's all out the window. Look at the State of the Union address, friends, and understand that what was said was no more than a delusional sales pitch and that all the things that we need were just given breath uh, and that's all, that we're going to have a Sputnik moment. We couldn't get Sputnik launched around this country. We couldn't send a man to the moon. We have space shuttles that explode. We have nuclear reactors that putrefy. They're going to put uh, into the supercomputer models to try to get more energy out of a nuclear reactor so they can melt down more easily. Sounds like Trevenol to me. And China is building brand new nuclear reactors to a standard, and they're going to recycle uh, waste and use uh, breeder reactors. They're building out high-speed dams. They're they're joining their cities together with mass transportation networks. They're installing solar energy. And what are we doing? We are jerking off, and we are going to have a death nail, a death fish kill, people kill in the United States. They're going to be uh, a people kill like they're having in the uh, in New Orleans area and in the Gulf of Mexico where people die silently in the night. That's what we're bound for because our politicians have decided to stand up for the corporation, decided to stand up to the lawyer, to stand up and, and work for the interest of people who no, don't want to do nothing but rob from us. That is the society that we live in, friends, and it makes me angry, and I want my country back, and I want my leaders to have integrity, and I want them to start to talk about the truth, and I want them to put us on a constructive uh, outlook. And if they fail to do that, we need to have a special prosecutor and bring everyone who has a conflict of interest in front of a court with the highest and most grave penalty for stealing from the American people and raping us and depriving us of a future to which we as a free people are entitled. I could have well said, Warren, I, and I feel your your frustration and your anger because it's exactly it's exactly where I'm at right now. It, it's it's dumbfounding to me that that we could be uh, lulled into this sense of uh, compl- it's not even complacency, this sense of stupidity. We're, we're lulled and into this. And dividing conquer stupidity, Charlie. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Divided, you know, should, should I hate Sarah Palin and Glenn Beck? Should I hate, you know, the guys on the left? I, I, look, I, I truly believe from the bottom of my heart it doesn't matter if it's George Bush Jr., George Bush Sr., Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, Barack Obama. The, these people are nothing. They're, they're set into a system that has been bought and paid for, and they are nothing more than a face and a spokesman, and our country is lost, Warren. I, I mean, it's just... it's. It, any effective change uh, that could have happened in the face of a financial implosion should have happened in 2008. You know, it, it, and like I said, if and the, the revolving door spins, and look at the same people from Goldman Sachs back into the government, from J.P. Morgan back into the government, from private corporations, ExxonMobil back into the government, from Monsanto back into the government, back into lobbyists, back into private industry, and then into the government again. None of them working for the benefit of the people, and this country cannot continue. It is so fragile. It is so fragile because of this crime, the systemic crime that has passed over our country, that it will not recover from much. One more uh, event of natural catastrophe, and we are done for. Done for. An earthquake, a flood, and you, you won't even hear about it on your news if it happens. They won't report it. You don't hear that now. 
you don't hear about you don't hear about reality now on your news. I mean, it isn't on the lips of the American people what's happening to the people in the Gulf of Mexico right now. It isn't on the minds of most Americans what's going on with the you know we're having fish wash up on shores and birds falling out of the air. It isn't on, on the minds of most Americans that you know Wall Street is. J P Morgan Chase had the best year ever in 2010, and they're ratcheting up and celebrating in Davos, celebrating the fact that there's not a government on the planet that could touch them. I, most people are just stuck in their own little bubble, and you know it. it it is the divide and conquer uh, rhetoric. It is the police state that says if you get involved, you will be slapped down. And it's it's separated and kept us apart and kept the information controlled to such a level that you can't find the truth. And if you do, you're a nut, you're a conspiracy nut for uttering the words of truth. And you want to have reform, Charlie. You, you go out with a few select individuals and you form a Tea Party. And because you didn't have an agenda to sell... Uh, they they just stole the marketing gimmick of the Tea Party, right. and now they're talking on the news. Uh, oh, the Tea Party is going to respond to Obama's State of the Union address. Just what Tea Party is that? It's not my Tea yeah. Party. Is it your Tea Party? No, no. It's a Tea it's a Tea Party that is bought and paid for by the Republican Party. Uh, it's a it's a truly is a dangerous Tea Party at this point in time because it's a perfect straw man to hang uh, to hang whatever heinous event that comes down the road next on. You know, and then then it will show you if you're an uppity American, if you're an uppity citizen, then you belong in the same category as a bunch of uh, uh, of nut jobs. I mean, it was brilliantly done, brilliantly taking over, uh, taken over, brilliantly funded, brilliantly made to look organic when it's nothing of the sort. Warren, we're going to take our one and only break. Callers are welcome after this break. Eight seven seven three four two six six seven three. Warren, I want to talk about agendas. I want to talk about something you and I have been talking about. We don't have to get too deep into it. Uh, but uh, I, I truly think this is the way forward, and we're going to talk about it after this break. We'll be right back with a special appearance by Warren Pollock on Wide Awake Radio. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Wide Awake Radio. I'm Charlie McGrath, your host. Uh, Warren Pollock is making a special appearance tonight, and uh, we're going to take callers. Tim, I know you're there from Washington. Uh, we'll get to you in just a second here. Uh, first of all, I want to say at the top of the show, I received an absolutely amazing gift from, uh, I'm just going to say Pearl. Um, and Pearl, I know you're probably listening, so I, I got that, and it was very, very touching. And um, I can't thank you enough. That, that kind of support is uh it always seems to be received at the exact right moment, and uh, I appreciate uh, I appreciate everybody who sent me gifts, and and I do greatly appreciate Pearl what you what you did. So thank you very much. Um, and there's a few of you out there, and you know who you are, who've uh, who've you know donated one way or another to this program. Um, you know, some of you've donated financially, if you could. Some of you've donated by you're working every single night on this show. Um, and there's people in this chat room right now who show up every night, even the nights I don't, and uh, work. And they, they do it for absolutely free. They do it because they want to uh, they want to have a forum, and they want to have a forum that is uh, a place they can go without having a bunch of trolls in the chat room. They keep it under control, and they keep it clean, and they keep it family-oriented, and they want to be able to voice their opinion, and they want to be able to hear truth and not the garbage we're being fed. So... Uh, a big heartfelt thank you from uh, Wide Awake Radio and Wide Awake News uh, to everybody who has contributed to uh, this program in one way or another. So, thanks again, um, Warren. I, I, you know, and these I talk, I talk like this, and it, and it really it really warms my heart on the American people, and and in this case, uh, pe- uh, in Pearl's case, people around the world. Uh, the, the citizens, the people. Uh, I think people are genuinely. Good. I mean, they they don't want to live under the thumb of tyranny, and they don't want to put their neighbor under the thumb of tyranny. Uh, but uh, uh, passive is the problem, uh, and and then just uh, uh, have an attitude of, uh, you know, the other guy will take care of it, or somebody else uh, smarter than me has it all figured out. But I, I think genuinely, when I, when when I receive gifts or messages or or memos or emails from people who support me, support what I'm doing. 
uh, it make it does make me feel like there's hope left out there, but it also makes it that much harder when I when I hear the garbage that we're being fed, and I realize that there are decent, good human beings uh, who are going to just be absolutely devastated uh, because of corruption and because of greed and because of the love of money. And uh, you know, you mentioned before the break that. There's, we had the organic Tea Party movement that was co-opted and destroyed masterfully, and uh, uh, because they had no agenda, they had no leg to stand on. Now you and I have been talking recently, and I know you're working on this. Um, and w- give us a little taste of uh, of what you and I have been talking about, as far as you want to talk about tonight. Well, I, I think we need to come up with an agenda. Um, you know, I, by the way, I just point, posted to the uh, chat board this thing that a local crime boss realizes his county is bust. And uh, one of the people in the chat board mentioned that Nassau County was just taken over by New York State. So Nassau County is a county I, I live in currently. So it's been uh, taken over by New York State. So it's a bank, bankrupt state taking over a bankrupt county. And that's the situation that we're in. But we need a, an agenda. And we need to have integrity in this agenda. And, for example, we need universality, which is that if if – if the Congress passes a law and the Senate passes a law, that law has to apply to them. So these senators and congressmen passed a, uh, a health care law, and guess what? They still get to keep their premium health care package. Well, isn't that, isn't that a great deal? Isn't that great? That they could pass laws for you and I, and then they could have a, law, a set of laws for themselves being elite. I mean, we need to have a, a list of common sense things in an agenda so that the, uh, the ownership of our ideas cannot be stolen by people that want to exploit them. I mean, normally ideas are, are not owned by anyone. Constructive ideas are not owned by anyone. People say to me that what I'm talking about, uh, people like Lyndon LaRouche talk about, building out infrastructure, looking at the physical world. And, you know, Fuller has comprehensive anticipatory design science, which predates that. But what we're going to have is people coming up with the same solution set, because these solution sets are pretty much universal. And these are not ideologies. I mean, we need to have a solution set for our for our country. At this point, I think that the Democratic and Republican uh, uh, crime organizations need to be disbanded and made illegal. I think that every single senator and congressman, every single uh, county executive, every single town supervisor, every single bureaucrat needs to be vetted and vetted for integrity and vetted for conflict of interest. And we've seen this time and time again where the people who are regulating offshore drilling are, are the people that were in offshore drilling or the people mm-hmm. benefiting by offshore drilling. We need to have integrity and we need every single person in our government that is in place now vetted by a special prosecutor. We should give them the opportunity to leave or they should be uh, investigated. Either one. You pick it. If you want to leave, leave now. If you want to be investigated, stay on. And government isn't going to like this. I mean, government's not going to like us pointing out the truth. You know, I wrote, I took my uh, civil union response today, and I sent it to the Department of Energy because they had a propaganda piece on how they're going to build out the internet, and that's going to be our solution to this uh, to this economic crisis. And how by 2035 we'll have clean energy cars. We're not going to make it to 2035. What are you kidding? No. People are going to be so yeah, poor in two years. They're not going to know what. Yeah, this but that's how like. Warren. That's how things are done. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not telling you something you don't know. But when they come on and they say, "If we just do this, we'll save this amount of dollars over this many years," and just give me a little bit more time and a little bit more of your. Uh, your faith and your trust, and I will get this fixed. But they know full well, they know absolutely full well when they uh, ramrod through a trillion-dollar stimulus package and then uh, have 48% of the country uh, behind them because they're talking about health care. They know full well when they pass something like this health care legislation. And I'm just using this for an example, but you could pick any piece of major legislation. They know full well that the law is not going to be written when they sign this uh, this legislation into law. It's going to be chopped up, and it's going to be, even if it looks tough on, uh, on Wall Street, if it looks tough on profiteers in the insurance industry, it, it isn't. It's, going, it's written by them. You know, and and the, the agenda will be set after, by you'll have some czar oversitting some you know, EPA or some kind of other agency sitting there writing the laws that Congress has given them carte blanche to do so. And, and this is the corporatocracy uh, that you and I talk about all the time, a revolving door policy in D.C. where you're working for a big lobby group 
Warren, how is it possible that we have 2,500 uh, uh, lobbyists for the financial services industry, which is a, a tantamount to five for every single member of Congress, House and Senate? I mean, how is this possible? How, how can we have a representative form of government when the people being represented, or the people who are supposed to be representing us, are just swarmed like a bunch of a bunch of rats swarming them on a ship, and and you know vote this way, lure them that way? There's no there's no uh, representation happening in D.C. It's it's absolutely out of control, and and I know it's that's out of control. Uh, yeah. And, and they don't even pay attention to it. I mean, I saw the tar part of why I'm so furious today is I saw the TARP hearings, which were being chair chaired by ISA. Uh, and, uh, you know, I said, uh, you know, they did a, a pan back on the C-SPAN hearing, and he's the only one giving a speech, the guy that he's talking to and the, that he's interrogating, and him, he's the only guy in the, in the room. Yeah. So they're not paying oh, yeah, attention he, he, to the crime that went on. They're just uh, no, doing and, lip and, service, giving I said, uh time on TV. They're not going to put people that's behind exactly bars. Right. That's exactly right. And, it, and if it's a representative... Uh, that, that you think might be on your side, you know, and I'm not saying 535 members of Congress, I'm not saying all of them are bad or all of them are corrupt. I'm saying the ones that need to be corrupt are because they're the, the ones that control the power, you know, the parliamentary tricks used uh, in order to get uh, liberty uh, stripped off of you and uh, power given to them. Uh, the, those, pe those positions of power are filled with the most corrupt people this country has to offer. It isn't the best and sure. brightest. It's the most corruptible. They, that's that's you're, you know look run for the smallest office and find out how corrupt it is. I try to run for magistrate. I had to go through people who were convicted of crimes, who killed people, literally. One of the guys interviewing me had killed somebody, and he's going to interview me for the job of magistrate. A guy who killed somebody while he was drunk driving is going to ask me how I feel about drunk driving, and how I'm going to ad adjudicate people that are drunk driving and killed somebody. What kind of Warren, do you want to uh, – go ahead. Well, I, I don't know, Charlie. I mean, I'd I like to see us have some reform in this country. And the I next would, too. And, and, and whatever, whatever gonna put us you, know, you and I come wall, up with – Charlie, for, for calling for reform. Absolutely. But that's okay, Warren. I mean, that's okay. At least you're going to be put against against the wall for uh, for being uh, – for having integrity, for saying what you believe and not kowtowing to a bunch of uh, – uh, fat cats, fat fingered fat cats who uh, want to do nothing more than destroy you. At least you have the courage and the and the the spine and the backbone to put your face in front of a camera and to say what you believe, regardless of the consequences. Um, I I want to get uh, Warren. I want to get Tim on real quick because he's been holding for about 20 minutes. Uh, so let's uh, Tim from Washington. Are you there still? Uh, yes, Charlie. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you fine. Thanks for calling. Okay. Um... Uh, Warren, Charlie, I've been on the front lines for 25 years, probably locked up 24, 25 times for my activism, political thought. And I can tell you right now, um, the reality is so bizarre and so wild that not only can people not comprehend it, they can't even believe it. Um, and so these are the two points I want to put on the table. The first one is... Uh, the upcoming big event in the time frame. The second one is the next evolution of talk radio. With the first one, uh, somebody wrote a paper, the most predictable economic collapse in history, and he says that by June, end of June, the quantitative easing will run out that, that uh, keeps the stock market up, and that as soon as they have to go for a third quantitative easing, that he believes that at the end of June, that's where the collapse is going to happen. And so I don't think they're going to let a collapse happen without a big event. So I'm kind of get, calculating between April 19th to somewhere around May 2nd. Something's going to happen. I'm not sure. The second point about the next evolution of um, talk radio, uh, you have a community. We all can see what's coming. And I just think that a self-funding mechanism is going to be set up in the sense that you form these talk radio uh cooperative communities, for instance, uh, if Charlie decided to get a food cooperative together uh, where all your listeners could join in a cooperative uh, uh, and uh, get great deals on all kinds of food, this and that. I recently bought a whole truckload of toilet paper uh, for my whole block. I know it was kind of crazy, 
but everybody <laughs> took a lot of toilet paper. paper, and it got cheap. But anyways, uh, I'll take my answers off the air. But uh, so, what do you think about the um, next big event coming up and the quantitative easing, and uh, mm-hmm. w- about think tank and the next evolution of uh, talk radio into an economic type cooperative community? Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, right. Warren. Okay. Thanks for thanks for the call and thanks for holding out so long, um, I, Warren. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna answer uh, the next big event question. Um, you know, quantitative easing when it when it runs out when it sputters out uh, later on this year. Uh, I, I think we'll we'll be they'll be trying to pull more of the same. It's it's funny Tim has that question and I talked to you before the show tonight, and I was telling you I, I'm utterly I'm I'm. I'm starting to change my opinion of the collapse of 2008 as being, you know, just the the flare gun, if you will, and the uh, one event in a occurring, uh, reoccurring cycle of events, uh, economic collapses, by far not the biggest, maybe just kicking it off. But, it, it, Tim, it's funny because it, it sure feels to me, and I'm starting to develop the opinion that, that we are on that same trajectory. You know, it feels a whole lot like 2007, uh, 12,000 points on the Dow. We're having celebrations on Wall Street. They're over in Davos patting themselves on the back, tell, <clears throat> telling each other how great of a job they've done. Uh, the same thing is being said in Washington, how they've uh, managed to rescue us from the brink. I think the I think we could see a big uh, a big correction a big crash uh, certainly this year. Uh, but then again, you know, uh, the reason I had this conversation with Warren is because I respect his uh, his financial uh, pedigree, and there there is no predicting. I can't tell you that silver gold is the right thing to own. I can't tell you that because I, there's no way there's no metric to use. To, to gauge the current situation we're in. We don't have free market capitalism. So in, in this uh, crony capitalistic uh, system we have now, I don't know what the right answer is going to be. I know it can't end uh, pretty, but I don't know if it's going to be strung out for another few years or if they're just going to let the whole thing implode because they've already managed to uh, pilfer the wealth of this nation and, and the wealth of uh, Western Europe. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it does feel to me like another 2007, we're being told everything's fine. And when, when, when everything, everybody's saying, uh, you know, celebration and, and everything's wonderful and it's going in the right direction, I think that's the number one time uh, to, ha- to, be, to have your guard up because uh, we know what happens. You lower your guard and then they lower the boom. Warren, what are your thoughts on that? And then we'll get into the My, my, my thoughts are, 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 are that if you can go and assign, uh, align yourself with a local farm, there's many farms that need funding, and you can be the insurance company for the farm. You could buy a part of the farm's output in exchange for money up front to finance it. There are many community farms like that. That's a great idea to do and a great investment for the future. If you could buy land in a small city that is surrounded by farmland, uh, many of these cities are degra- severely degraded, such as Buffalo, you can ha- New York, you could actually get houses for free. If you can afford to do that, that is a great thing for you to for you to do. It doesn't look like there is going to be economic reform. The conditions, uh, economic conditions worldwide are perilous. They have price controls in China. They're suing Walmart in China for reducing the size of products. It sounds familiar uh, here in the U.S. Six ounce can of tuna fish is now five ounce can of tuna fish. Uh, they're downsizing every single product. It, they, they can't downsize it fast enough. And it looks to me like it's deflation that's being masked by uh, by government's intent to to inflate, and we're getting cross-currents of both presently, where asset values are deflating, and incomes are deflating, and uh, house prices are deflating, and wages are deflating, and then it's not really inflation, it's really, um, you know, it's really another... Uh, a law of one price when it comes to labor, that's that's not really deflation. It's really the law of one price, which is occurring, which is all labor value is equal. And if all labor value is equal, it is all in contention for things which used to just come to the United States. So we're having competition for food. We're having competition for oil. And we can expect without a public policy, without any kind of organization, with, with deflationary debts going bad, with pensions going bad, with savings going bad, with jobs being lost, we could expect that's if that's not bad enough. We could expect core prices to increase for non-core items, including food and energy. That's non-core inflation, food and energy. So I would think on this trend, 
$500 a week instead of $100 a week to feed your family, your, your effective salary going down to a quarter of what it is today. And that's the disaster that we're going to find. What's the stock market going to be? Who knows? What's gold price going to be uh, worth? Who knows? Um, should you be without gold? No. Should be, you be without silver? No. Should you be looking at it as an investment? No. You should just look at it as, as a uh, you know, safety peace of mind. Type of yeah, truly, and yeah, I, I agree with you. And truly, if uh, I, I honestly feel, Warren, and I think you'd agree with this, that that you know, if you're sitting on uh, loads of precious metals, but you're not sitting on, uh, man, this is the time that you want to have uh, a back stock. You know, if you can, if you can store it, if you can put it away. Uh, and this isn't for end of the world. This isn't for uh, you know a meteor hitting the planet. This is for it's going to cost you 500 bucks a week to feed your family potentially. Uh, in, in the I mean, look around the world. That that is the next wave of a uh, of a uh, public uh, discourse is going to be over food. You know, we we saw austerity hit last year in uh, in Europe. It's coming here this year. We see food riots hap- starting to happen now uh, around the world. And guess what? Uh, food is food. You know, the the breadbasket of the world is here. You know, they're growing it, but there's not enough of it to go around. And uh, when when uh, when supply and demand uh, are not uh, equal, guess what? The price is going to go through the roof. So uh, this right, is the time of, if you are sitting. Is based on, sorry, Charlie. A lot of the supply is also based on transportation. So right now we, in the United States, we have a highly subsidized transportation system. All the roads, the automobiles are tra- are, are subsidized. Even oil companies are subsidized. The oil which reaches your house and your door is subsidized through the projection of military force worldwide, which costs $500 billion a year at least. It's not even accounted for, correct? So we need to um, – I don't need to chill out on the farm, frankly. But I'll, no, no, I I'll think hang she's, out no, with I, you if you want. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she, I think Blue's asking you – I think you're getting hit on more, and I'm not sure. I don't know about that, but I'll hang out on the farm with you. <laughs> um yeah, transportation, and that's that's the Tim's question. You got me off track here with this this little triangle you're building with the chat room. Uh, but uh, Tim's question on on uh, investing in local, you know, he's buying he's buying uh, uh, commodities. I'm just going to call it that commodities uh, for his neighborhood. That's that, that, you know, if you could put together a co-op like that uh, or have the mentality uh, uh, to think community, I think that's outstanding because uh, you know, once again, as we talked last night, uh, the community is going to at some point. Uh, look in the mirror and realize that they're the only ones that are going to be able to bail themselves out. Because uh, at the end of the day, when uh, all the rhetoric we hear from our representatives about fixing the economy and these bailouts worked and all this, that, and the other thing, at the end of the day, when all the wealth is gone and it's all been integrated upwardly, guess what? You're going to be left holding the bag. And when, when, you know, when it does hit the fan, you're going to have yourself to rely on, uh, plain and simple. Warren, I wanted to touch real quick um, on the idea of this community. And I can tell you, you know, Warren and I have, have talked about putting down on paper uh, some ideas that, that any, any movement going forward, any, any organic uh, movement like a Tea Party type thing, we, you know, if we're involved in that, him and I are involved in it, we, we want it to stand for something and have something down on, on paper that we could say this is what we believe in um, and any of this other crap that could be hung around the neck of this type of uh, organic uh, community movement would be uh, uh, stopped at the beginning with the, the tenets of the uh, movement written down on paper. Does that make sense, Warren? Yeah, it makes total sense. And I, I think, it, it, you know, a lot of people have to realize the reality and forget about the ideology. And a lot of these ideological solutions where you, change, where you behave a certain way and something happens don't really apply anymore. I mean, a lot of people want to go back to the Constitution, and as far as I can tell from where I'm standing, the Constitution doesn't it doesn't exist. And there are people, yeah. you know, journalists put in jail routinely now. There are people put in jail for for breaking what uh, an authority uh, says, not what is the, against the law. So, um, you know, someone said to me, "Well, you guys better just lay low and stop talking." But talking is the only way to get people involved and to get people active and to get reform started. Unfortunately, the people who are looting or the people who are in control, they're the people who are blocking the situation and blocking uh, progress because there's a lot of money in, 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 in the political process now. Lots of money from lobbyists, lots of money for hiring 
your buddies and taking care of friends and family. And we need to restore public service to America. No, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly, and I, and I look forward to working with you on that. And, you know, on that note, uh, I also would say that I, I know that uh, the alternative media community um, has been talking uh, about doing more collaboration and doing more simulcasts and doing more uh, together in order to get some solidarity uh, in, this, uh, in this group of people because uh, I think the, the whole idea of uh, – a truth movement or an awakening or alternative media, whatever you want to call it. The whole idea is uh, we have to stick together at this point because they're going to come after us. Uh, they're going to come after the truth uh, because it is too painful for them. They, it's too painful, it's too painful, for, painful them. for them. Yeah, it's too painful right. for them. And it would result in a lot of their own prosecution, criminal prosecution. Yeah, I agree. That's why you're going to see, I, I think, this year, going forward this year, you'll see – uh, you know, more guys in this in this genre in this community will be doing more work together and keeping in touch like never before. You know, right now I have a, a, a free banner ad for uh, activist post at my website, um, and uh, you know, I, Doug Owen of Blacklisted News he links my stuff all the time. I link his stuff all the time. You know, we we need to do more networking like this in order that if something happens at one spectrum, it's covered by the entire spectrum and it can get out there and be talked about immediately. Uh, and, and also, if any type of organization is put together, uh, something that, that would have a chance of having any political clout, it needs to have a voice, and, and it needs to have a voice that is uh, consistent and uh, su supportive of one another. That doesn't mean everybody's got to agree on everything because, you know, everybody doesn't agree on everything, but we can agree on integrity. And uh, without it, you know, look where we've got, where we're, where we're at right now. That's what we get when we have a... Uh, a Community, or when we have representatives that are run by money and integrity is out the window, um, that's why I think this year is going to be the year of uh, joining together with like-minded folks in this community and uh, trying to make some some kind of noise that makes a difference. Yeah, and I, I agree, and I think we have to be constructive. Is actually to offer forth solutions. I'm afraid what's going to happen is, um, you know, in the next year or so or two years, I think for the average American, things are going to get so terrible that we may not be able to pick ourselves up from the situation. You know, what I mentioned a year and a half ago is we have to have this, this infrastructure build out. We have to have now tariff controls for imported oil and also imported labor. We have to uh, equalize the situation. We have to have Glass-Steagall in place. We have to have prosecution of criminals in brokerage companies and in banks. We need separation between venture capitalists and banks. We need to have bankruptcies take place. And this is all disruptive to people's savings and disruptive to people's lives. And all this needs to take 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 place for us to have any idea of reform. But what's yes. not going to give you reform are the Democratic uh, politicians and the Republican politicians that you just can't do it. They're one and the same, and they're going to send yeah. us down. The they're, serving, they're serving someone, but it, it certainly isn't us. Very well said, Warren. Uh, this was an outstanding show. I don't know how it, how it sounded on broadcast, but I'll tell you what, I, I truly enjoyed it. Thanks for dropping in tonight. Thanks for uh, uh, venting with me. Uh, on the true state of the union. I appreciate it very much. Warren Pollock, WPollock.com, or you can go to W.E. Pollock on YouTube and uh, check out his very inspirational videos. Please stay tuned because Jeff Rince is coming up next. Always a great show. Tomorrow night we'll have, uh, tomorrow night's Thursday, so we'll have Dex on. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Have a great evening. Same time tomorrow. Bye.